Hello, we are back with the Fufi, the Israel course, and we are starting today, technically it's nighttime where we are, um, on lesson five, and it's a sh very short uh, lesson, so we're actually going to combine this video, lesson five, and lesson six together, because le lesson six is relatively short compared to some of the videos <laughs> that we've done so far. So, anyways, um, in our last video, we talked about uh, Israel being a light into the nations and how um, the, it's a democracy and their main um, I mean, like foundational morals and um, characteristics of this Jewish state is to be accepting of everyone, uh, no matter their race or their nationality or their religion, and how the rising terrorist organizations in the region are making it unbearable for anyone to live in peace. And so Israel is a safe haven in the Middle East. So this lesson is about Israel. It's called um, A Vibrant, Thriving Society. And we're starting on uh, page 68, if you're following along in the textbook. This textbook, you can get the digital version online, or you could buy the book itself. If you're just buying one, it's $20. But if you decide to have this and teach this in your church or your school district, or um, youth groups, uh, you name it, um, you can, the more you buy, the bigger the discount you get. So uh, lesson five of Vibrant and Thriving Society on page 68. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to describe different segments of Israeli society, articulate the varied religious practices in Israel today, and discuss different examples of life in Israel's multifaceted society. Before we begin, it asks that we pray for our eyes to be open to new things we haven't seen before regarding Israel, and pray for our ability to more deeply embrace Israel and all her diversity. Since this last, well, what's so funny? I was getting ready to say something about the last lesson and literally the next uh, paragraph talks about the last lesson. <laughs> so let's, let's, uh, let's go ahead and pray before we uh, keep reading and have our like old personal comments here. But Father God, we thank you um, that we get to come together. We get to share uh, truth and enlightenment on your nation and your people, all your people. You love us all. But um, Israel, you've set apart to be the apple of your eye, to bring uh, truth um, to the world and to be a light to all nations. And so we ask that you open up our eyes and uh, increase our knowledge and understanding of the Jewish state and what's going on right now uh, in the Middle East with the Hamas uh, attacking in Gaza. and. Um, just the enemies um, coming against Israel. And we pray that we can, uh, all nations can show support for Israel uh, militarily, financially, um, and just uh, morale. And so um, with what we're going to learn and study today, we pray that people's eyes are open to the truth um, and not blinded uh, and deceived in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, in the last lesson, we learned about the unique characteristics of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state, including what it looks like to safeguard minority rights. We also spoke about the different minority groups in Israel, what it looks like to be a Christian in the region, and how Israel is a safe haven for Christians in the Middle East. Now, let's go deeper and learn more about Israeli culture and society. What does it look like to be part of a country with so much history where so many cultures and ways of life converge? What I was going to say was, you know, it's like we keep hearing these people like at these uh, Palestinian, pro-Palestinian marches and things like that. I think there was a march today 
um, which I just completely have kept my eyes off of any sort of news, um, major news station, and I get my news elsewhere. But it's like these people, these terrorist groups, they, they, their goal is destruction and death. And you can just look at their countries, at their, um, their region. And I mean, you don't see peace. You don't see freedoms. You don't see uh, prosperity at all in them. And it's like, no wonder. And then you look at Israel and you see her, the prosperity and you see the peace and you see the freedoms they live by and that they want for all people. And so it's just kind of like, like I just want to do this to people because if they just looked without hearing anything and just looked at pictures of cities and different regions in that area, you'd be like, okay. <laughs> now, not all regions, I mean, obviously, and um, not all the regions that have Muslim populations, they're, they're thriving too, because not all Muslims want jihad. They don't want, you know, to go rampaging, you know, they want peace too. A lot of them do. And it's only this minority group of uh, terrorists that are messing things up, just kind of like in America, there's a minority group of people who just it happens to be screaming louder than everybody else. And so it makes the whole nation look bad when this small people is not behaving. Yeah, and we're saying minority as in number, not in class or caste or whatever, but yeah. color. Yeah, we're culture. talking about just I ideology, not not like race or culture, or creed or language or um, religion. Even it's just a, a group of people who think that chaos should rule and reign. And literally everything that's right, they say is wrong, and everything that's wrong, they say is truth. And it's just ridiculousness. So same thing, I'm sure, what's going on right now in Israel. There's a small group of people who have these ideologies. <laughs> and they they speak loud. I, wasn't it um, Teddy Roosevelt that says uh, said something about being quiet but carry a big stick? <laughs> carry a big stick. Yeah. <laughs> so they're loud, but we need to carry a big stick and use it when when it's necessary. Yeah. All right. Right. The the verse that comes to mind is there's only one who comes for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. And we know as Christians that that's Satan, that's the devil, that's demonic, that's fallen angels, that's Everything that sets itself against the opposite of God, I mean, uh, you know, sets itself opposite of God, which is love and light and truth and justice and righteousness and peace and patience and kindness and all these things. So we know you by your fruit. We know who the enemy is. We know he's who he's working down in and through. And as we go through this, it's not to point a finger at a a particular person or a particular region or a particular tribe or a particular tongue or, a, but we, this is a or religion, religion. Mm -hmm. This is a terrorist group. They are, they are creating terror and we know who they really serve. Uh, we, there is no doubt. There is no blindness on our part. We know whom you serve. So um, this is just going through history, going through, uh, I mean, um, you know, the saying is shame on me, you know, shame on me one, you know, shame on you the first time, but shame on me uh, just about every other time after that, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. so we're just going through these histories. Yeah. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we are not fooled. Mm -mm. Nope. All right. So uh, page 68, lesson five, we're looking at part one. It says, let's begin by discussing what we know or think we know about modern Israeli society. 
questions to think about, but we're going to uh, watch this video. It says, what, um, before we watch the video, what do you know about Israeli society and culture? And why do you think or believe these things? Where did you hear or learn them? I think another thing to ask yourself is, have I talked to someone who is Jewish? Have I had an encounter? Have I had any, like, and, and if you had, were those bad encounters or were they good encounters? And, you know, what are you basing your current bias on? Is this something that you've heard and never found out for yourself? So this is all on a seeking truth mission. And mm -hmm. we always say, don't take our word for it. Do your research with a .gov, a .org, a historical, you know, actual document, documentation not just um, opinions and false narratives and social media, social media. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, resources. So mm -hmm. go ahead. So we're going to watch a short video called this is Israel. And this was filmed in 2018. And um, some things that it wants us to take uh, to keep in mind as we're watching this, is it says, take a few minutes to think or talk about the similarities and or differences regarding what you thought of Israel initially, as well as what your observations are after observing the picture collage. And we've got a picture collage on this page and video. And then what types of people and places did you see in the video? Was anything surprising? What aspects of Israeli culture and society did the video highlight? Did you learn or see anything new? How does this portrayal of Israel compare with the understanding you had before watching the video? What is similar and what is different? So I believe I've got it queued up. I'm on my cell phone doing this broadcast. So I'm gonna pull up YouTube here and it is right here. This is Israel. Turn off your phone, turn off the TV, have a real connection. I'm the first Israeli NASCAR driver. You see an Arab and a Jew. I'm seeing Anan as my friend. This is Israel. Empty synagogue! Ramadan Zechode Shalem. Bringing together Arab and Jewish women. We are legendary food. The cheese is very stretchy. This is Jerusalem! Now here, at the wall. This is Israel! How are you doing? We are Amichad Levechad. We are part of this history. We have to celebrate what we have in common rather than what divides us. Everyone's really warm here. Shalom Tova. And a happy new year. All right. So. Um, what did you, what did you see that maybe you hadn't seen before? didn't realize or um you know something that uh, is different than what you already had kind of envisioned of israel uh, the jewish and the arab women in celebration of their feasts and holidays and things you know prayer times and stuff being they honor they're honoring each other mm -hmm. yeah it's bringing bringing people to the table you know who aren't like them and doing it peaceably. I, I mean, I just see if they had said, this is Israel, <laughs> I could easily see that as parts of the United States, right? You see like buildings and bustling people. And of course, I mean, besides the wall, which we all know is <laughs> the Western wall, but it's like the people and the food and the you know, we had the guy dressed up as Santa Claus and, you know, you see the beaches and you see the, you know, just the people and everything. It just looks like a modern bustling, like metropolitan in some areas and then farm, you know, um, agriculture and other areas. I mean, it just looks like any other prosperous country. You know, it's not, it's not desertous i mean in the fact that it's like just barren it's not barren is what i mean it's not barren it's not ugly it's not you know 
it's just a beautiful country with beautiful people that just want to live together peaceably and to prosper and for their children to grow up safe and educated and, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, it's, yeah. It's, it doesn't compare. I mean, it just doesn't compare to, you know, what the enemy is trying to do. The enemy seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. And obviously that's not, that is not Israel's MO. You can see it. Uh, the people there are happy. They're living together. They're working together. Um, they're striving together to keep Israel safe. And and like in the previous video that we did, where we showed some um, other videos of, of this, um, the... Gabriel <laughs> in the Watchman video that we we were looking at, he said he's trying to promote people to integrate fully. And even if you're even if you're Muslim or Hindu or atheist or Buddhist or Christian, and you're living in a country, you should be proud of that country and protect it. And so that's why he was trying to get people to you know, um, in is it called enroll, sign up, uh, enroll for the, the military. And so just like America, it doesn't matter who or what you are or what you look like. If you love your country, you should support it from anything, anyone or anything that tries to come against it to attack, attack your freedoms. Um, so that's, that's what I see. I saw people who were happy to be there um, and, and to live peacefully together. So uh, next page here, page 70, it says many people based on how Israel is portrayed in the media believe that Israel is a dangerous country. As you may have noticed by observing the collage, there's a whole other side to Israel that is not often highlighted. While Israeli towns have certainly suffered under rocket attacks from Hamas in the Gaza Strip. I mean, this was written in 2020. <laughs> this is not new. Hamas attacking Israel from the Gaza Strip is not new. It didn't just happen two, three weeks ago. It's been going on for a long time. So um, while Israeli towns have certainly suffered under rocket attacks from Hamas in the Gaza Strip, as well as from acts of terrorism on, on the whole, Israel is incredibly safe with a variety of different groups of people from different backgrounds coming together to work, play, and live. In our last lesson, we learned that the majority of the country is Jewish. There is incredible diversity within that st statistic. Approximately 20% of Israeli Jews are Torah observant, which means they seek to follow the Hebrew Bible's commands precisely. An additional 20% are secular Jews. They identify as Jewish, but they do not engage with religious practice. The remainder of the Jewish majority engages with Jewish religious observances, observance uh, to varying degrees. Their practice exists along a spectrum, neither as religious as the ultra-Orthodox, nor as unreligious as the secular. Israel, as a young country that encourages Jewish immigration, has become home to many um, different Jewish groups from around the world. The majority of Jews in Israel are actually the descendants of Jewish immigrants from Arab countries. The, these Mizrahi Jews have influenced music, food, and culture in Israel. Some of the food in that video is really good. <laughs> uh, approximately 1 million Jews immigrated to Israel from the Soviet Union, bringing with them their own traditions. 60,000 Jews in Israel are of Ethiopian descent. These immigrants and their descendants have traditionally practiced their own unique style of Judaism. There are also Jewish immigrants from England, America, South Africa, France, Germany, and more, all of whom add to the cultural diversity that has become a hallmark of Israel. Did you know? Jewish diversity in Israel reflects the myriad experiences the Jewish diaspora has had throughout the Jews years of expulsion from their ancestral home. Page 71. As we've already discussed, Israel has a significant Arab minority. Arab Israelis, Muslims, and Christians are full members of Israel's society. There are Arab political parties in the Knesset, which is Israel's parliament, and Arabs have held elected office, 
Some have served in the military, including high-ranking officers and in diplomatic posts representing the Israeli government abroad. The Arabic language holds a special status in Israel. Its recognition of its importance to its community. Oh, in recognition of its importance to the community. Religious life among Israel's minorities is thriving. There are over 400 mosques in Israel with a tenfold increase since 1988. So if you think that Israel oppresses its people or people who are not like the Jewish people, wrong. A tenfold increase of mosques being built in Israel since 1988. The Israeli government provides salaries to more than 300 Islamic leaders, as well as Qurans to schools and mosques. Their, <laughs> their funding Islam in uh, schools and in providing Qurans to the children in those schools. Like what? Okay. The Christian community in Israel is thriving. As we already know, Israel is the only country in the region where the Christian population has increased in the last several decades. Uh, moving on, it says, did you know the Knesset is a one house parliament that consists of 120 members from a variety of political parties? 13 are represented in the current Knesset. And this was 2020, so that number might be different, but we haven't looked at that. So each member serves a four-year term unless earlier elections are called. 36 members of the Knesset of the 23rd Knesset are women, 30% of the total members. This places Israel in the 63rd place out of 192 countries listed by the Interparliamentary Union. As of 2021, 10 members representing Arab parties serve in the Knesset. So this might have come out. I was looking at the copyright at the beginning of the book, and it said copyright 2020, but who knows when it was updated because it did say something about 2021 in here. So anyways, uh, the gentleman, his name is Father Gabriel Nadoff, which we saw in our last video. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. Um, the very last video that we played was about 20 minutes long, and it was um, a CBN, what was it, CBN, Christian mm -hmm. Broadcasting Network, CBN of the Watchmen. Um, and so Father Gabriel was on there, and it says, uh, Father Gabriel Nadoff is an Israeli Greek Orthodox priest living in Nazareth, who is a co-founder of the Israeli Recruitment Forum. Father Nadoff has been outspoken and active in encouraging Arab Christians to enlist in the Israel Defense Force. He has also been a strong advocate for Israel amid fierce opposition, pointing out that Israel is the safest place for Christians in the Middle East and is a place where Christian freedom of religion is protected. He is also an avid Christian Zionist. For this stance, he and his family have suffered death threats from those who wish harm to Israel and the Jewish people. He has said, quote, I believe the land of Israel belongs to the Jewish people. If you are truly a Christian and read the Bible, you have to believe this, end quote. And there's a picture here of Gabriel, uh, Father Gabriel and uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu shaking hands. Um, we're almost done with this um, section, and so we're going to watch a few videos here at the end. Um, but before we do that, it says we're on page 72. Um, we're going to zoom in on the multifaceted society. We're going to take a few moments to dig a little bit, bit deeper into Israeli culture and society to learn about aspects of the country that don't always make the news cycle. The Jewish population makes up 73.9% of Israel's population as of 2021. 21% are Arabs. Those identified as others, which would be non-Arab Christians, Baha'i, etc., make up nearly 5% of the population. In 2020, the popul population by religion was 73.9% Jewish, 18% Muslim, 2% Christian, and 2% Druze. Um, we're going to watch these videos now, and it says, refer to the list of YouTube channels listed under additional resources at the end of this lesson. Choose two or three videos from the list to watch. 
take notes in response to the questions below, and they're gonna be repeated uh, under activity two. So what does the video show about Israel? What are its main points and highlights? What new information did you learn? What does the video, <clears throat> excuse me, throat's getting dry. What does the video tell you about Israeli society? And so, uh, let's see. What we are gonna see is Israel's society is dynamic, culturally diverse and reflective of the groups and people who make up the country. People from all walks of life, including native Israelis, Jews, Arabs, and Christians, and more come together to create an environment that is open, ever-changing, and multifaceted. A website to check out for further study and reflection is israel21c.org. Uh, so israel21c, as in cat.org. Um, choose an article or video that highlights these and Israeli society that speaks to you and journal about it if, you, if you'd like to. Um, but this next video we're going to watch is by the Israel Collective, and it's called The Diversity I Found in Israel. Let me show off screen. All right, so let's do this. I'm a musician. I'm from the Ivory Coast, it's in West Africa. I came in like a band exchange between my church and a church here in Israel. I'm supposed to be here for like a year. And then afterward, I decided to stay because I love the vibe here, I love the people, and I had good friends. I decided to start the Afrobeat and you know, the West African type of music here in Israel. And here we are playing and singing in different languages. Israel is one of the diverse country I know. Here you have people from Philippines, people from Ethiopia actually, Nepal, Nigeria, Ghana, Eritrea, Sudan, Colombia, a lot of tourists. People from Nigeria, I start to learn their language, singing in their language. People from Kenya, they teach me some word. People from Congo, I'm singing in Lingala, you know, French people, Sweden, everything, Russia, everything, you know. It's amazing. It's made the, the place, you know, lively. The place is alive. It's funny, when I was in New York, and I said, uh, they asked me, where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from Ivory Coast, but I'm from Israel. They are looking at me, what? What are you doing there? <laughs> because what you hear outside is like, whoa, every day, boom, 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 you know? That, that's what the med media is trying to show to the people. And they don't know that there is life here and everything is cool and you know, fun and you know, good vibe. Nice people that learn here. Everybody wants to help, caring for each other. Things that you don't see everywhere, you know. Back when we used to pray every morning, my mom was like hardcore Christian woman, you know. Every morning she woke us up at 5.30 actually. We start praying at 6. And one of the subjects in the prayer is to pray for Israel. Like it's written, we'll have a blessed Israel, we'll be blessed. Actually, I'm still praying for Israel, even though I'm here now. Israel is the holy land, Jerusalem and all the things. Everything starts here, you understand? So for a Christian, it's a dream to come here and to visit Israel, to see the holy land, you know, see the places where Jesus went. When I'm going back home to visit my family, after three, four days, I just miss here. I just want to come back. <laughs> I think the next video is actually about the place. So let's try to skip this. All the way, your life, I love it. Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. So I'm Raj. Hey, I'm Dan. <laughs> So before we get onto that one, any questions or, I guess not questions, I don't know how I'd answer you, but any comments about uh, that last video, Kate? I was just like, how awesome is it that you're all brothers and sisters? 
you know, like you're all family, you're, you're accepted and loved and you can thrive in a place like we've said over and over where these people have may or may not have came from chaos and violence to find peace and then they found it and they can claim Israel as their home. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just awesome. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I was like, man, what a big family we have. <laughs> Paul talks about us being adopted, right? We're adopted into this, this covenant. And so um, everyone, whether, you know, you're Jew or Christian, this is, Israel is special to us, right? And um, like you said, you can go there and, you know, a lot of people end up staying there from all over the world. You could find people from all over the place in Israel. And I think that's awesome. And like and I said, I they think people who don't know or think that they know one th the wrong thing should actually go and see. I mean, obviously now there may be an issue with that, but go and see like, uh, one of the guys that works for QFI, um, was like, I wanted to go and see for myself all these things that I had been hearing, all these bad things about them. And he went and no one treated him poorly and no one, you know, spat in his face and stole his money or, you know, it was just like everything I knew or had grown up with was a lie. So mm -hmm. I encourage that if you have the financial means to go and you just go and, you know. Be for them. yourself. Don't don't believe what other people say and propaganda. Mm -hmm. Go for yourself and see, and and you'll <laughs> your eyes will be open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next video we're gonna watch it's a tour of Jerusalem's famous Mahan Yehuda Market. So it's just two uh, two minutes here. There we go. So I'm Raj. Hey, I'm Dan. And uh, this is the Mahan Yehuda Market in Jerusalem. Let's go. Sum up this market in like three words. Color, vibrancy, and very pushy. No, yalla. It's a full send yalla. The, there is a goal, which is really good coffee. What is this? Halva. 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 Mm. It was like a hazelnutty, little chalky. It was good. I kind of need to wash it down with like coffee. Roasters right there. So we just ran into our buddy Ran at the coffee shop. Ran, thoughts on the market? It's amazing. So much color, so much stuff going on. Beautiful. Commerce happening. And Ran's from LA, so this is kind of like LA or not at all? No. <laughs> like 10x intensity. All this mixture for people. What does it smell like? It smells like my wife's shampoo. Oh. So Yoab, Yoab, tell us something very important about Makhne Yehuda. We have the best food in the world over here. Food from everywhere. Egyptian, uh, Turkish, Syrian, everything here. All the flavors meeting here. The market is extremely energetic. There's a lot of amazing food here and it's a great way to see the local culture in Jerusalem. The market is wild. So many people, but there's so much to see. It's really interesting. And uh, they're playing side trance at one of the, the shops, which is awesome. Good side trance. But really, the important opinion of this market comes down to Jace. What do you think? Uh, this is mass organized chaos. Kind of like northern Louisiana. <laughs> it reminded me of New Orleans, actually. Yeah? Yeah, it actually did. Did you get some good grub? If you oh, yeah. Good yeah. grub. If you love people, you're in the right spot. We hope you enjoyed walking around Mokne Yehuda Market with us in Jerusalem. Daniel, any last thoughts? Come to this market, enjoy the people. It's a great place to feel alive. You gotta come check it out. Cute. That was Doug Dynasty guy right there. <laughs> Chase. Yeah, and what I get from that is it's not just the diversity of people in the market, it's the diversity of imports. I mean, how can you have things from Turkey and other places that are surrounding it? it that means there's no embargoes. They're, mm -hmm. they're paying, they're giving in to the economy of the, 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 the enemies that, that surround them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, just...
just pointing it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, there, like you said, it's, uh, this book said it wasn't necessarily a melting pot, but a mosaic and a mosaic is just colorful and vibrant. And there's a lot of pieces that make up the picture, but it's just a beautiful display. Um, and it all comes together, you know, a masterpiece of art. Um, and so that's exactly what I was thinking whenever I saw the market. It's like all different smells and, you know, flavors and <laughs> colors and people. And, you know, it's just like the guy said, commerce, it's commerce and it's finest. Um, you know, being able to go to a country and say, OK, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to um do my best to succeed and to have the opportunity to do that. Not a lot of countries give you the opportunity to do that. And uh, that's just kind of what I was thinking. You know, you could open up a shop and, you know, sell, sell groceries and make money for your family and it's not oppressive. So anyways, I thought it was great. That actually concludes uh, lesson number five. So really short, that was it. Um, just kind of showing you the diversity and, and that it's a thriving society and economy. And the next uh, lesson we're gonna get into, go ahead and dig into lesson six, uh, which is about values in play. Uh, and it kind of begins on um, 75 and 76. So, the um, at the end of this lesson, we should be able to demonstrate an understanding of how Jewish values are expressed in Israeli society, recognize how Israelis are inspired by Jewish values to give back globally through the idea of Tukun Olam, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. No, Tikkun. Tikkun or Tikkun? Olam. <laughs> and then uh, finally give examples of Israeli NGOs working around the world. So um, it references Israel being a light to the nations, which you'll be able to find that in scripture in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. Uh, do you want to do some reading, Katie? Yes, I was wondering. <laughs> well, it was so short in that chapter five or lesson five. So I'm gonna let you take over. I'm gonna grab me some water real quick. Let's go ahead. Uh, the pray part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we're gonna pray for a better grasp of Israel's heart for the world and eyes to see how modern Israel is fulfilling her calling to be a light into the nations according to Isaiah 49, six. And since she's taking a little drink break, I'm going to go right to that. Isaiah 49. Mm -hmm. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, the nations, the Goyim, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Um, another version, I want to say, I'm gonna click on this. I want to, uh, I want to share. Um, I like the NASB. If you're new into, um, Getting into the word, the AMPC is really good, um, but I like the NASB 1995. Um, he says that it's too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also make you a light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. And um, I love this version because salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua. And so um, Yeshua HaMashiach is who the first one that I think of when we read that. So let's go ahead and pray. Um, Father, we ask that you continually um, dig out our ears, open our eyes, and change our hearts of stone into hearts of flesh that we can better understand your heritage and your inheritance in uh, the tribes of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, your covenant people, and your land. 
for uh, which you've had of established for an everlasting covenant, Father. We ask that you give us wisdom and enlightenment, insight, something we haven't seen or known before, uh, according to how modern Israel is fulfilling her calling to be a light into the nations. In Jesus' name, amen. It goes on to say, as we learned previously, Israeli society is multifaceted, a product of the many different cultures and traditions reflected in the country today. As we've discovered, this vibrant social framework exists within a state that embraces both Jewish and democratic values. Jewish values are a key component of how Israelis engage with their life in Israel and are, in many ways, the basis for how Israeli citizens engage with global society. Um, I think we've mentioned it before, but I've heard it put several ways that Israel is the gate, is like the last offense for all modern democratic societies who are, who have <laughs> like values of truth, peace, and justice, freedom for all people, uh, you know, equality in the Middle East. So if Israel disappears, what's to stop the, the heinous things that are going on coming over here? I mean, we could talk about allies in other countries, but they've got their own problems. You know, so Israel and other nations know and recognize that Israel is holding down the fort for us in the middle east in the middle east mm -hmm. so, uh, they are they are more valuable than many people know would you call that a litmus test like ha what happens to israel in the middle east is kind of a litmus test to what could be happening in all other countries and like i mean they're kind of like the gate into europe right mm -hmm. they're the gatekeeper because once this, you know, terrorist, if the terrorist movement grows into uh, larger numbers and facets, it, I mean, it's just all it has to do is just go right through Turkey <laughs> and right up into Eastern Europe and then Western Europe, you know, so. Yeah. Or spread down into, um, you know, Egypt and Africa. Well, because it's it's already there with the guy who, um, you know, had to immigrate from Darfur for um, to save, you know, save himself and his family uh, of Christians. So um, it's there already. Um, and Sudan, I believe, is what he said. Is that where Darfur is? I can't remember what he said exactly. But I'm not sure of that geography in that region, but <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what's the um, next section? Did you get through? Um, just part one, the uh, Jewish values in Israel innovation. I didn't get very far. I, I had just seen a news article um, about Egypt, and I kind of wanted to bring that up. Um, <laughs> I'm playing with my skin over here. I just did this one. I was like, oh. <laughs> Well, in the news on the 28th, uh, liberal is, isn't the daily wire kind of, kind of liberal or no. Anyways, um, Hamas leader, women, children, and elderly must die in Gaza to help our fight against Israel. Um, that's on must the, die. Yeah. That's on the daily wire.com. Um, sacrifice yourself for your own ideologies. Okay, please. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm trying to find where this is, but it was Egypt was like, you guys can't come down here. <laughs> um, no, thanks. Yeah, they he put tanks, a uh, large number of tanks at the border was like, no, you're not crossing over into here where you have there's no sanctuary for you here. Um, boy, there's so many news articles coming out that it's hard to I mean, if you're one day out, you're. But anyways, we can continue reading on. Maybe I'll find it later. Um, so let's learn how Jewish values have influenced Israeli society and what that means for the world at large. In activity one is a primer and discussion. We can read the 
QFI's primer Takun Alam found on the next page. Um, some questions to be asking or thinking about or what did the primer highlight? What new information did you learn from the primer and what did you think of the primer? What are your impressions of Israeli society after reading this? So what is Takun Alam? The Hebrew phrase Takun Alam developed over time, but it has its roots in the Bible where it's used to mean to make straight, establish, arrange, or repair. It literally means repairing the world and is often used to describe social justice and improving society. Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and thus may the Lord God of hosts be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil, love good, and establish justice in the gate. They're, they're our gate. <laughs> but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. That was um, in Amos chapter 5, 14 through 15, also uh, 24 in the NASB 1995. The Talmud, a central text of rabbinical Judaism, says, if you save one life, it's as if you have saved the world. The concept of tikkun olam within Judaism originated as the instruction to behave and act constructively and beneficially in the modern, oh, and beneficially. In the modern era, the principle of tikkun olam carries the idea that Jews bear responsibility not only for their own moral, spiritual, and material welfare, but also for the welfare of a society at large. Contemporary rabbis view the term as meaning, quote, the establishment of godly qualities throughout the world. Um, anything pop up when we read that? <laughs> I just don't get how you could hear how awesome Israel is and be against her. And I mean, that's really the premise of these videos that we're doing, right? And why we're going through this course is that if you haven't heard that Israel is good, hopefully now this will spark some thoughts, some logic within, you know, the minds of people and say, oh, actually, okay, I was wrong. Israel is actually a great country and should be defended, you know? So I just... Yeah, I love Israel, <laughs> and I can't understand why anybody would not want to protect her. I just I can't. Well, this reminds it. me of the Hebrew word derek or way or path. Um, and we and I, I don't, I don't, I say we, but the scripture that says, "Raise a child up in the way that he shall go, and when he gets older, he shall not depart from it." Um. I've heard that this is how all Israeli children, uh, Jewish children are brought up, that these uh, that parents should cultivate their children in, and strengthen their already strengths. So by the time they get into out into the world, into their fields, they can do the most good for the world. Mm -hmm. So if you know that your child, whether it be in arts or in maths or sciences, you know, if you see your child has a gift or is talented, they spend their life, their their growing years cultivating those gifts. And then they bless those children by saying, hey, this is my child so-and-so. He's going to be a doctor. Hey, this is my daughter. She's going to be the a prima donna ballerina. You know, this is my child. She's going to be the next, you know world's best sculpturist or piano pianist or you know and then and then they just do that and there's there's just so much beauty and light and and when I think of the word light I think of OHR like in the when God said let there be light it wasn't just light it's life let there be life in the death of you know darkness <laughs> let there be light life and mm -hmm. uh and so I just like you were saying, you know, I can understand how Israelis or Jews don't understand how a Christian says they can be Christian and not do not walk according to the word because they had they have not put it into effect like mm -hmm. Jews do every single day of their lives, every single minute of their lives, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
I was reminded of um, the, the study that we kind of did together this a year ago, June, I guess it was when we went to Denver. And we were looking at, actually, I think I studied it a little bit first, and then a couple months later, you grasped it too. But the difference between Joseph's children and the way he named them, uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. And I was reading this rabbi's commentary and watching this video uh, that he posted about it. And he, he explained that Manasseh was like an example of you being a candle in the darkness like the darkness is all around you but you still prosper even in the midst of all this chaos right your 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 light still shines but it doesn't change that darkness it's just that you're prospering in with you know surrounded by darkness and Ephraim represented you being so bright a light that you literally change darkness to light <laughs> And just like God literally spoke light be um, and the darkness literally fled. Um, I feel like that is that's Israel. Israel is not just a candle shining in the darkness, but Israel seeks to change the darkness around her and literally is a light unto the world. That's what we've been talking about. You know, they are a light unto the world. They literally push back the darkness in the region and in the globe. I mean, she's just a beautiful country and it's God's apple, you know, apple of his eye. Um, and so, whereas, you know, other cultures are like me, 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 me. Israel is like, let's do whatever we can to bless others, you know? So love you, Israel. Love you. <laughs> Um, every time I read this tikkun alam, I think I'm saying it differently every time. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's tikkun alam. You said uh, it that, that way each time. I think. Tikkun. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. like I just I'm gonna like say it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we apologize if where our pronunciation is not correct. Mm -hmm. Um. So tikkun alam in practice. Israel is described in the Bible as a light into the nations. Isaiah forty two six, and modern Israel's Medical and technological breakthroughs are a blessing to all of humanity, fulfilling ancient prophecies. Today, Israel is leading innovation destination for an increased number of multinational corporations, utilizing Israel's more than 6,000 startups for new ideas. A new report shows 35 countries that are currently active in Israel and are being challenged by and absorbing Israel's approach to innovation. For example, Watergen, an Israeli company, creates water from the world's most available resource, air. This groundbreaking technology taps into the atmosphere and uses the humidity in the air to provide fresh and clean drinking water to people anywhere from a remote village to a busy city. Israeli scientists at Tel Aviv University recently produced the first ever 3D printed heart with human tissue and vessels. The first time that anyone has successfully engineered and printed an entire heart complete with cells, blood vessels, ventricles, and chambers. This trailblazing achievement promises to transform the lives of many people in the future. From creating streams in the desert to medical breakthroughs, Israel remains on the forefront of technological advancement and continues to make new discoveries that are changing the world as we know it, for the better every single day. For instance, Israel is always among the first on the scene at international disaster sites. The IDF medical and rescue teams have responded to earthquakes in every corner of the globe, including Mexico, Armenia, Turkey, El Salvador, India, and Nepal. In August 2018, Israel Aid, the leading Israeli humanitarian NGO, sent a response team to the southern Indian state of Kerala, which had been hit by record flooding. Israel AIDS team distributed 450 relief kits, including hygiene and cleaning item, items, such as soap, hand sanitizer, and water purification sachets, or sachets. In 2013, <laughs> Typhoon Haiyan devastated the Philippines. Israel sent humanitarian and medical aid. 
When hurricanes Irma and Harvey ravaged Florida and Texas in 2017, Israel was one of the first responders on the ground providing aid and assistance. Which tells yeah. me a lot because they probably beat our own government. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's like they hop on a plane like the minute it's like, okay, we're going to land just as the last cloud disappears and we're going to hit the ground boots, you know, boots running. <laughs> But it just, it kind of amazes me because when you think of the size of Israel, it's not even, it's like 60 miles at its widest point, right? Isn't that what the, the, and I could be wrong, but that's what I, I'll have to look it up. So don't quote me, but look it up for yourself. But it's such a small little sliver of a piece of land and they are the first ones to volunteer people. Like you would think that because of the size of their population in comparison to other countries, they might not send as many people or be the first person on the ground boots like running, but they are. <laughs> yeah. After... Ama- that just amazes me in and of itself. <laughs> at their narrowest point, it's nine miles, but only at their widest point is it 71 miles. That's <laughs> latitude. Longitude, it's about 263 miles north of south. So, okay. I mean, if you get on a Texas highway, you could be there in like two and a half hours, like top mm-hmm. to bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get like from, well, that. Like from from Houston to Dallas is four hours. From Dallas to Austin is like four hours. From Austin to San Antonio is about an hour. From San Antonio to Houston is like three hours. <laughs> like to get from the and I haven't even I haven't even gone to the tip of Texas to the Mexico border, like the the very bottom of it. But I mean, you you can hardly drive the the widest section of texas from one point to the other in a day (laughs) like it's a two-day trip just to get across the state of texas at its widest part and i love seeing um like pictures where people are like overlaying maps of like other states in comparison to texas um (laughs) a guy at work you take a generic shaped uh state like nebraska like a square Nebraska mm-hmm. is almost 10 times larger than Israel. Yeah. Like 9.6 times larger than Israel. And that's just like one of our like square ones. Like yeah. let's just like South Dakota. That's kind of a square one. <laughs> well, and I was just thinking because the, the Houston Metropolitan, like to get like, and I'm talking the Metro, not within like the main like city limits of Houston, but to get the suburbs of Houston to go from the west part of the metro all the way to the east part of the metro depending on traffic without traffic 45 minutes but like with traffic it's probably like traveling (laughs) the state of israel like the state of israel to texas 31 times (laughs) israel fit in texas yeah I mean, you could fit it within Houston's metropolitan area easily. Okay, and these are and and then 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 there's people crying that Israel is the bully to the Middle East. Yeah, when when the Middle East and like Muslim countries are like, oh, you know, the... <laughs> oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like millions of square miles, and then we've just got this little bitty sliver. Oh my goodness, yeah. Biblical. <sighs> okay, so. Do you want me to take over? Uh, well, and I I just wanted to point out too. We don't owe just owe them just gratitude and like a thanks for coming. See you later or see you next time. No, these countries that they go in and help need to do more than just say hey, thanks for all your resources, supply, and time, and and all that stuff. And they need to be the first ones to step up and say. Yeah. We support you in the same way you supported us, whether it's boots on the ground, whether it's whether it's supplies, whether it's, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Medical aid, military aid, financial but will, aid. But will, they call, but will they, is that the first thing they do? Do they call upon the places they went and said tit for tat? No. Yeah. No. No. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying. Yeah. That, that should be our first reaction is when somebody helps you in your time of need 
you should be the first person to jump to help them in their time of need. And I just thought about this. And so when we were little, there were like sister cities, you know, it was like everywhere, like we grew up or studied or traveled. It was like, oh, this city is the sister city of this city. You know, it's like, I feel like everywhere Israel has helped and sent their volunteers immediately that city would like that region or that city or that country should say, okay, we're going to partner as many of our cities with your cities and whatever you need and whatever, you know, whether it's economical or, or whatever trade, um, medical, military, <laughs> you're our sister city. We need that partnership. Um, and I, I, it's just, it's, I don't know. I haven't heard of them. I actually did a, a Google search to figure out sister cities and like hardly any place that does that anymore. And they definitely need to. Yeah. Um, um, so we're on page 78. If you're following along and we're one, two, three, four, starting the fifth uh, paragraph down. Yeah. Yeah. In January, uh, 2019, a dam at the iron ore mine collapsed on a large crowd of employees at least 40 people were confirmed killed, 23 hospitalized, and at least 300 were missing. It makes me want to cry already, and I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> Buildings were damaged from the mud rushing out of the dam, which also caused many residents of the town to flee. Here I go. In response, <laughs> about 130 naval engineering, firefighting, and medical experts from the IDF Home Front Command, as well as Israeli Zaka or ZAK search and rescue volunteers were sent to Brazil to assess damages and locate and tend to the injured. Israel sent aid to Haiti in 2010 and 2021, respectively, after both of the devastating earthquakes that rocked the island. Most recently in 2021, Israel was one of the first on the ground. Israeli humanitarian groups, Israel Aid, and smart aid mobilized to provide water and immediate disaster support. Here's a quote from the Talmud. Whoever destroys a single life is considered by scripture to have destroyed the whole world. And whoever saves a single life is considered by scripture to have saved the whole world. Which is just saying, you know, from one come many. And when one person dies, you it, it just destroyed generations upon generations you know so it's just like <laughs> yeah this is endearing me more and more <laughs> I mean we were already madly in love with Israel but this is just like the honeymoon all over again <laughs> you know I feel like it's just like you know falling in love with Israel all over again um yeah for sure <laughs> Like, I, I just picture myself, if I ever get the chance to go to Israel, they're going to have to be, like, pulling me off even, the like, the Israeli TSA agent's leg. Because I was like, I don't want to go back. Uh, it's so. like, I'm just going to hug and kiss everyone. Like, <laughs> yeah. right, love you, right. love you. They're going to be, like, crazy American. And I'm like, I love you so much. I love you and I love you. Like, social norms out the window. Like, you know. <laughs> I could just see us like meeting somebody like really high up in the government and we're just like <laughs> embarrassing ourselves because we're just hugging on them and loving on them. That's me. <laughs> I love you so much. I don't even know you, but I love you. Uh... In 2021, the Champlain, Champlain Tower South, a 12-story beachfront condominium in the Miami suburb of Surfside, Florida, partially collapsed. Israel Israel offered clothes, medication, food, water, and other aid to the victims of the collapse. The Israeli government dispatched the here they go. <laughs> the Israel Defense Forces Home Front Command search and rescue team to assist in their rescue efforts. In addition, a unit specializing in providing psychological and emotional stabilization following traumatic incidents was dispatched from United Hatzalah, an emergency medical service organization. Furthermore, Israel consistently shares its innovative technologies with the world, not only when disaster strikes, but to improve people's day-to-day -day lives. For example, Israel developed BabySense, a breathing monitor that has helped protect over 600,000 infants from sudden infant death syndrome or, or SIDS. 
Israelis also developed the PillCam, a disposable miniature video camera that patients can swallow, which is now utilized by doctors in more than 60 countries worldwide. We, I mean, I've seen the commercials for baby sense, especially when, uh, you know, we were having children. That's mm -hmm. That's amazing. And do they get yeah. credit for it? Or And one of the things that I'm noticing about all these places, too, it doesn't matter how big the city or how prosperous the country or if it's just a tiny town or a beachside, uh, you know, village or whatever, they're sending people. Yeah. Well, I mean, our government should be doing so much work for its own people that when other countries are like, hey, can we come help? It's like, no, it's not necessary. But Israel's like, we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure they had to get permission to come. But at the same time, it's like we should be so like first in helping our own citizens that we would be like, no, that's OK. We're good. But still, they come. I mean, I don't want to I don't know how this like plays out as far as permission and things go. But you know what I'm saying? Like. Did our country and like our leaders just say, yeah, sure, come on, you can come help? Or, you know, was it like, we're not going to help? And Israel's like, we will. You know, like, I don't understand. <laughs> I still don't understand. Well, this, this brings up the, to mind the difference between states and the national government. Like, yeah. Israel still takes the time to develop relationships with governors and state leaders that yeah. the state leaders say, come on. You know, no matter what the United States government does as a whole to Israel, it doesn't stop them from coming to state to state, city, right. you know. And so yeah. if our nation is not going to support Israel as a whole, we need our state and local governments to pair up with them. Like you said, let's have our mayors meet mayor to mayor and say, I want to bless your city and we'll, we can trade, we can do this economic, whatever it may be, like you were saying, let's, mm -hmm. let's partner mayor to mayor, um, governor to governor, senator to senator for each state. So whether it's, you know, a majority of Democrats in the house or the um, Senate, it, that does not matter. Yeah. Write your write your letters as constituents, letting your local, you know, local and state, city and state, know, yeah, city, county, and state government. What we want to do, whether it's pick a city, pick a neighborhood, even. I mean, that would be awesome if we just did it on every level, you know, mm -hmm. church to church, neighborhood to neighborhood, city to city, county to county, state to state. Um, and I mean, <laughs> you could bless. Texas could bless Israel 31 times over and the amount of people and state, you know, city to city. So um, you think you can't help because you think you're too small, but any, anything is, you know, is going to bless them. So glory to God, not that they're asking for a handout or they may not even need, you know, I don't know what, but I'm just saying there's many, many things we could be doing. We don't have to be sitting here twiddling our thumbs, waiting on dirt to dirt to get, you know, a clue. So, yeah, like you said, the size of the United States, if every state just adopted one area of Israel, one town in Israel, every state just blessed that one city. And I don't know how many cities are in Israel. You can Google that one, too. But like you said, like Texas, Texas alone could help Israel. And like, I'm just estimating everything that they need, <laughs> you know, like. We're so huge. We're so huge of a state that, you know, gosh, it would it would take so I mean, I bet you almost Google real, real quick for me. How many cities are in Israel? It says Israel has 16 cities with populations over 100,000, including Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, Yafo. But in all, there are 77 Israeli localities granted municipalities or a city status by the Ministry of the Interior, including four Israeli settlements in the West Bank. So There's 16 cities, but 77 lo uh, localities granted municipal municipalities. Now search for me how many cities or localities are in the state of Texas. <laughs> Uh, more, than, more than 1200 cities, 
and 2.3 million residents, over 400 towns with populations fewer than a thousand. So, <laughs> yeah, 1200. So, 1200, 70, 1200 divided by 77. Yeah. You could bless them 120 times over, almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's just one state. Sorry if this is too loud. And like you said, if, uh, if uh, like and a half times. <laughs> how many? 15 and a half, 15.58. So 16 15. times. Over. Yeah. Yeah, and we just pick every city picks a city, you know, and then I guess it could be like, you know, the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, which just re recently visited, I think, with um, Netanyahu, because I saw some pictures um, of them together. And I'm just like, okay, assign each city, each of the 1200 cities in Texas, one of the 77 localities in Israel, get together and say, okay, each you know, what is your economy like? What are, what is thriving and where are, do you need opportunities, right? For assistance and then match them to the cities in Texas that can provide that assistance so that it's like literally working hand in hand. Hey, we need this. Hey, we need that. Well, guess what? Let's trade, you know, and in the things like what's going on in Israel right now, it's like, okay, you're responsible, Texas, for their, you know, one of the 77 or whatever it is. So we're going to send over, you know, clothes or equipment or money or whatever to help aid them. I mean, there's yeah, just... And what a good, and, you know, Israel is smart in training up their military and all these things because whether, the, you know, they're getting training in hurricane and they're not anywhere. I mean, I don't know if the Mediterranean Sea ever gets hurricanes, but I'm like, they're getting training and all these different things. How, I mean, how great would it be for training for the National Guard or the, whatever to go? Well, I do know that um, it, like the IDF does come over here and train with our military. And I know that some of our military go over there and train with the IDF yeah. and they share they share things. And so, I mean, I, I heard um, of, you know, uh, the U.S. giving some fighter jets to Israel and uh, some of these like amazing maneuvers that were done in these jets that an American hadn't done, but the Israelis were doing yeah, it. They made like, it better. Oh. And then they turn around and gave the U.S. the um, suit technology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They took our fighter jets, made them better. And then was like, here, let's share this technology back with you. Like everything that Israel touches gets blessed. So imagine if your city partnered with a city or locality in Israel, your city is going to get so blessed. Mm -hmm. And then if the, if every state in Israel, um, if every state and every country that Israel helps did that, oh my gosh, <laughs> amaze balls! It'd be amazing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we went off on a tangent they're just they're just so great they yeah 60 countries worldwide use that pill cam <laughs> it's like all these things everything that israel touches is blessed and it's just so much better than other other you know they're just they are blessed and they help bless others just like the bible says uh page 79 additionally I'm going to keep reading. Israeli company Orcam developed eyeglasses that help the visually impaired see. The device has a camera that reads aloud what it sees to the user. Israel's emergency bandage has been used by American soldiers in Iraq and has saved countless lives by preventing hemorrhaging. Additionally, Save a Child's Heart, or S-A-C-H, stock, is an Israeli nonprofit organization that performs heart surgeries for free on children in need from developing countries. As a part of the process, Sach also brings in medical personnel from the patient's countries and trains them in life-saving pediatric cardiac care, cardiac care. This organization is also training up the first pediatric heart surgeons from developing countries so they can go back home and perform surgeries for their own people. Tikkun Olam lies at the very heart of Israel. Though Israel is a tiny country, it does a tremendous amount of good in the world.
from being one of the first responders whenever a natural disaster strikes across the globe to sharing life-saving medical technologies with communities all over the world. The Jewish principles of tikkun olam has developed in Israel to a, into a practice of doing good through manifold technological and medical innovations that are repairing the world. Glory to God. They're not only being the light, they're sharing the light. So the light. Yeah, they're teaching everything. other people to be a light. Yeah. yeah. You know, and right. I've said, I just said it on the last video, I think. People who destroy cannot create. So how many, how many times have they created to prove that they are not the destroyer? They are mm -hmm. not destructive. You know. Time and 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 time again. <laughs> yeah. but unfortunately like you said people forget and it's like don't forget every single day like the gentleman um who said that his mother would wake them up at 5 30 so that they could pray at six o'clock and and pray for the peace of israel that's what every nation should be doing it should be constantly on our hearts on our minds and on our lips to pray and to bless israel what how can we bless israel today <laughs> Yeah. And, How can and we bless whoever, the Jewish people in our neighborhoods? You yeah. know, whoever hasn't watched this is like if they jumped on this as their first video, go back and watch our first video about mm -hmm. all the biblical scripture that says as soon as if, if Israel ceases to exist, so will, will the world. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, we it's cover just, a lot of scripture in the first two videos, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of scripture, um, covenant, and then also like lesson one of this book. Um, so yeah, like like she said, definitely go back and watch the first first two videos for sure. Yeah. Um, next up on page eighty, we have a, a film to watch called Inside Israel. Um, it's some questions to think about as you're watching it. Excuse me, what did the video highlight? What new information did you learn from the video? What did you think of the video? And what are your impressions of Israeli society after watching this video? So I'm going to share my screen and make sure that's the only video I need to watch right off the bat. And it is sure. Share me. Go back to our playlist. Let me hide my face. There we go. This one inside is real. <laughs> Hope you don't need me like Shein or something. Shein. Oh. When people think about Israel, they think about war or religion or even falafel but to me when i think about israel i think of the triumph of the human spirit israelis surrounded by enemies have turned a desert with hardly any natural resources into a flourishing productive and caring society My name is Tal Ben Shahar, and although I was born and bred in Israel, I spent much of my life living and working abroad. Working in Asia, studying in the US and the UK, and touring the world playing professional squash. I received my PhD from Harvard, and after completing my studies, I went on to teach there. He teaches Harvard University's most popular class, Positive Psychology. Please welcome to the show. Tal Ben Shahar. Tal. It was very exciting to know that what I was thinking about, writing about, and teaching was having an impact. In spite of all this, I decided to move back to Israel. The main reason for this move, I would say, is family. The Israel I came back to was not the Israel I left. I was amazed at what happened here during the 14 years I was away. Israel had transformed. Israel had not only joined the 21st century, in many ways it was now leading the way. When you look at 
about the NASDAQ, companies are listed from around the world. There's one country, though, that truly stands out, and that is Israel. And Israel is the fastest growing, one of the most dynamic, entrepreneurial, and innovation-based economies on the planet. The sky is the limit for inventors in Israel. Israel has been a remarkable achiever in terms of technological innovation. Israel has developed some of um, the world's leading technology. Even if you don't live in Israel, chances are you have something that was made here. If you just look at it on a, on a daily basis, how much stuff do you use in your daily life that has its origins in Israel? It's, it's rather remarkable. Many of uh, the microprocessors invented by Intel were designed in Israel. Nowhere in the world outside of Silicon Valley will you find more technology startups. People come from all over the world to look for Israeli technology. Warren Buffett shelled out more than $4 billion for Iskar Metalworking, the largest purchase the legendary investor has made outside the United States. I, I understand that their facilities are incredible, but I would expect that. Intel developed here, HP as a center here, Google is very successful here, Microsoft as well as the research and development. If you actually do the math, Microsoft is almost as much an Israeli company as we are a U.S. company. This country has been such a beta site or a laboratory for solving uh, both national and international problems since its inception. The technology coming out of Israel is being used to connect the world, green the planet, save lives, and have fun. Wow! Wow! For instance, Kinect lets me use my body as the controller. This very cool technology was developed in Israel and then bought by Microsoft. The workout. In a way, Israel is known to everybody as a center of innovation, as a place where you can find more innovation than anywhere else in the world per capita. If you look at countries that are represented in the stock exchanges, the ranking today is number one, of course, the United States. Number two is China. And number three is Israel. The US, China, Israel. Looking at our size, how is it that Israel, with its 7 million people, has the third largest group of companies traded in New York? This is an amazing fact for a tiny country to actually eclipse all the nations of Europe in the creativity of its entrepreneurial leadership. We were living here in the middle of the desert, we really had no choice. We had to come with something in order to farm in this area. One of the main reasons behind the Israelis' ability to lead in innovation, to bring about progress, is the resilience in the face of crucibles like these. Necessity is the mother of invention. You know, when you look around, you got sand all over the place. And you got to start becoming creative. If you look at just about every Israeli home, school, park, or farm, you'll notice something interesting. An innovative idea that makes the most of Israel's very limited water supply. Drip irrigation. People think that this is just a plain, the hose with a hole in it. This is not the case. Behind each hole, there's this very sophisticated dripper that uh, is pressure compensated, that is self-cleaning, that has filters in it. There's a lot of technology and research and development and innovation, so it's certainly not just a hole in the pipe. With drip irrigation, farmers can grow 40% more crops by using only half the regular amount of water. This has enabled Israelis to go from surviving in a desert to thriving as a leading exporter of fresh fruit and vegetables all around the world. You know, when I travel, and I see our uh, irrigation systems in remote places, and I see how it helps people to grow more with less. I'm very proud uh, of it. At any given time, over 100 million people are confined to wheelchairs. And although wheelchairs have become more sophisticated, they've really been the only option. Amit Gopher has the chutzpah to believe that he can change all that. The initial idea was to make a device that will enable people to function from morning to night without the need of using wheelchair. From medical myths to medical marvels, 
we head to Jerusalem to meet a paraplegic who's walking tall. It's a breakthrough you're going to have to see for yourself. You are witnessing a miracle. The man you see standing up, walking, even climbing stairs, has been paralyzed for more than 20 years. And never uh, I think about I walk. Only the dream I walk. When I see the impact of the device on a person, it gives me great pleasure. Oh, it's the greatest thing. Cruising down the hallway. Oh, it's, it's awesome. It's like it's been the best thing since the accident. This country has become a country with all its imperfections that sees as part of its purpose looking out for other people. The Bible says so. The Torah, the Jewish uh, tradition talks about guiding and helping others. That's the Jewish DNA. That's Israeli hardwiring. Also, religious or secular makes no difference. I want to do something good, and not just for myself, but I wanted to do something good for Israel, for the society, and, uh, you know, it feels strange, but I think that it's also for the world. You know, we're far from perfect, but we're in the game. Okay, we're, we're in there fighting and helping and trying. And we're creating cures for cancer and we're creating new, you know, cool technology and we're trying to feed the world. We're trying to solve dependence on, uh, on oil. It, it really goes to the heart of what being an Israeli is about. This is what Israel is all about. And to be back here, to be able to share it all with my family, this is what life is all about. Okay. Wow. So, questions are, let's see, what did the video highlight? So, obviously, technology and innovation. Um, what new information did you learn from the video? What did you think of it? And what are your impressions of Israeli society after watching the video? I mean, I had had, I mean, I've heard of what they've done. I just can't keep up with, there's just so many things, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's, it's free. I mean, they share it. Uh, I, it was interesting to see Microsoft and Google and all these, what I would consider liberal companies saying, Hey, we're basically an Israeli, an Israeli company. company. Yeah. So I'm like, uh. You know, we're going back to, you know, I was trying to think of like the golden rule for, you know, and, and what what other cultures besides, um, you know, others have like a karma type rule, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, cultures I didn't even know. I mean, we saw the Baha'i blessed is he who prefers his brother to himself. Buddhism is whatever is disagreeable to yourself. Do not do unto others. Confucianism. Do not do unto others what you don't want them to do to you. We have Christianity and Judaism who says you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Um, Gandhi even said to see the universal, the universal and all pervading spirit of truth face to face. One must be able to love the meanest of all creation as oneself. Um, mm -hmm. Jainism. In happiness and in sorrow and joy and pain, we should consider every creature as we consider ourselves. Hinduism, this is the sum of duty. Do not unto others what that which would cause you pain if done to you. Islam, none of you will believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Uh, the Native Americans, respect of every form of life is the foundation. Plato, Seneca, Shintoism, Sikhism, Voltaire, Zoroastrianism, I don't even know what that word is. These are all things that it's like, this is just more fruits. Mm -hmm. You know, if you live by the foundation of do unto others as Israel has, 
share, love, give. A country that creates so much, so much of the time, cannot be also destroying as the world lies about them all of the time. (laughs) So truth, 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 truth. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. My thoughts exactly. And and when when exactly what you said was um, Microsoft saying we're as much as (laughs) as almost as an Israeli company as we are an American country. That made me just think all of these, all of these companies who have headquarters, uh, not maybe not even headquarters, but have locations um, in Israel, like, where are you? I mean, I, I don't follow mainstream media at all. I don't, I don't, I just, it's all malarkey. But what I do follow, you know, and and like Christian movements and organizations and people who speak truth, Epic Times, or I think is the name of it. Um, Just one of them that I pay attention to. Um, Yeah, where are these, where are these companies speaking up and out against, you know, terrorism? And because if Hamas takes over Israel, there goes your your whole R and D, you know, all of those buildings, everything. And you think that Hamas is going to use it for their own, like, you know, technology and innovation and growth. No, they're just going to destroy it. (laughs) Or use it to continue to destroy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're going to continue on page 80 here. Israel sees part of its purpose as looking out for other people. Israeli corporate and military innovation, social and entrepreneurship, and its third sector, which is non-governmental organizations, are influenced and informed by the core tenets of Judaism, joined with the ideals of democracy. The Jewish concept of tikkun olam, Hebrew for repairing the world, inspires Israelis of all backgrounds to engage with the world around them and to make it a better place. This keeps with Jewish tradition, which holds that within the definition of tikkun olam is the implication that the world should be improved upon and that each human being has a role in bringing the world back to the way that God intended it to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. (laughs) Did you know the Jewish concept of tikkun olam is also one embraced by Christians? Jesus tells us how to care, take care of our communities, as well as how to give back to others. There are many examples of this in the New Testament, including Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, which says, Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are the household of the faith. That was um, from the NASB, 1995. Tikkun Olam originates in the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, which Christians know as the Old Testament. For example, in the second giving of the law, Moses commands Israel, justice and only justice you shall pursue that you may live and possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You can find that in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 20. The Old Testament prophets repeatedly commanded Israel to do justice to the orphan, the poor, widows, and strangers and aliens. You can find that in Isaiah 117, Jeremiah 7, 4 through 6, Ezekiel 45, verse 9, Hosea 12, verse 6, Amos 5, verses 5 through 24, and Micah chapter 6, verse 8. With just four peace treaties with countries in the region, Israel is surrounded by hostile states throughout the Middle East, all of which have actively worked for its destruction at one time or another. The history of war and aggression in the region, in addition to the constant threat of Hamas and Gaza, as well as potential terrorists in the West Bank, has directly influenced the development of Israeli technology, both in the military and private sector. For technology, both, uh, oh wait, for example, one company in Israel uh, called RT Aerostat Systems was initially founded to provide cost-effective reconnaissance balloons for the Israeli military. 
confusing Jewish values with the more practical consequences of Israel's position in the region, the company expanded its products to the civilian sector. RT aerostat system surveillance balloons were used in Mexico to search for survivors immediately following that country's deadly earthquake in 2017. Israel's shortage of natural resources also contributes to a culture of innovation. Despite its location in the oil-rich Middle East, Israel has yet to discover oil. The country itself is almost entirely desert. The Leviathan gas field was discovered off the Israeli coast. It is one of the largest deep water gas discoveries of the century. Today, Israel ranks at the top or near the top of foreign countries with companies listed on the NASDAQ and has outranked the United States on the Bloomberg Innovation Index. Typically, successful countries have a plethora of resources, strategic significance, or size to help them develop. Israel is limited in these things. Instead, Israel's smaller size has forced its population to be innovative, strategic, and forward-thinking. Agricultural development, like Nedefim's drip irrigation system, has helped to feed Israel's growing population and create a sustainable food supply. I didn't... I. I'd heard of drip irrigation, but I didn't realize how it worked. And that's amaze awesome. <laughs> Step one, start a homestead. <laughs> Step two, get drip irrigation, you know. <laughs> Step three, buy a Jersey cow. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. These technologies have also helped people across the globe, from Benin to Senegal. Israelis seek to solve problems for the greater good of their society as well as globally. Israelis of all backgrounds, including secular Jews, religious Jews, and the non-Jewish minority are influenced by this dynamic and spirit of engagement. And so now we're going to go, it's on page uh, 82, and it's going to list some um, information about uh, Israel and their innovation. So it says that Israel has 12 Nobel Prize winners since 1966. In the 1950s, um, Israel invented the modern solar water heater. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The 1960s patents drip irrigation method. Uh, in 1970s, it produces first electronic milk meter for dairy farms. In the 1980s, pioneers first antivirus computer software. In the 1990s, invented instant messaging technology. <laughs> and the 2000 creates the USB flash drive stick. Okay, oh people. <laughs> the stupidity of the United States and um our use of technology because of, you know, the innovativeness. <laughs> I'm not blaming Israel, but I'm saying a lot of people in the U.S. wouldn't even be able to functional function at all without instant messaging or a USB flash drive <laughs> or antivirus computer software. Oh my goodness. And then in uh, 2010, 2010s, they invent a uh, robotic exoskeleton for the paraplegics, which we saw in that video. Israel has the highest ratio of college degrees, museums, and startup companies per capita. It has the highest rate of entrepreneurship among women. Only country that has more trees today than it did 50 years ago. And the only Middle Eastern country where the Christian population is increasing. And uh, extended international hum humanitarian aid to over 140 countries since the 1950s. Oh, goodness. We're almost done here. So uh, page 82, it, we're going to, at the very bottom, um, starting part two, it's called Taking Action. We're going to learn about different Israeli humanitarian organizations. So I we're going to point out that if company or countries, and like we were talking about, even, even your municipality adopted mm -hmm. the good that Israel always puts out and mm -hmm. it just continued to spread, Darkness wouldn't have a leg to stand on. Yeah. The arguments, the f falseness, the lies, mm -hmm. they would have not, like, how much are they, do they have to give back until you say, you've given me more than what 
I could ever return. I lie about what you take. You took. It wasn't taken, period. But they've given you so much already. You, You now and never have, but you most certainly do now not have a leg to stand on. Your argument is flimsy as wet paper, tissue paper. You know what I mean? Toilet paper. (laughs) It's weak, you know? So uh, this is technology. It's available for everybody and it betters, you know, like they were saying, it's a desert. Their desalination of the salt water, they, they share that too. You know, they provide water for the, for the countries around them. Mm -hmm. They don't have to share that. They don't have to share that. But you can take that and you can get that and you can garner that knowledge and take it back with you and make your home and your people successful and healthy and thriving. Just, yeah. I mean, we've talked about, I mean, we've talked about the size of Israel. We've talked about all the good that they do. We've talked about the, the biblical standpoints. We've talked about, you know, we've heard from other people, other different walks of life and countries and things. I'm like, your argument began so thin and now it's it's it, you're in the negative <laughs> like, so far in the negative you'll never be able to bounce back and yeah. Israel does such a great job about it and they do it unpridefully I would be spiking the ball at the end of the field in your face and doing like a victory dance but <laughs> it, it's just like you know they're just super, keep going there's just more love more and more love mm-hmm yeah, so um, it wants us to kind of do an activity, which we'll kind of, I'm going to do some more reading before we do that. But it says, refer to the list of organizations found in additional resources at the end of this lesson. Choose an organization and watch a short informational video about it on YouTube. Discuss the video with your study buddy or family or friends using the questions on the handout as prompts. So Israel is just one example of the many different Israeli organizations and companies working to make the world a better place. As we've learned, Israel's unique circumstances of being a small country, limited in resources and under constant threat, have not stopped the country from living out its mission to be a beacon of Jewish and democratic values. Israel is characterized by innovation and social entrepreneurship, where startups, individual entrepreneurs, and citizens at large focus on the greater good. There's a picture here of uh, John F. Kennedy, the former president of the U.S. in 1961, and that's what his picture um, when it was taken. And he's quoted here saying, Israel was not created in order to disappear. Israel will endure and flourish. It is the child of hope and the home of the brave. It can neither be broken by adversity nor demoralized by success. It carries the shield of democracy and it honors the sword of freedom. And so it has um, some different things that you can uh, read uh, on your own or websites you can visit. Um, One of the books is called Thou Shalt Innovate, How Israeli Ingenuity Repairs the World by Avi Jorish. Jorish. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, you can buy it on Amazon. Um, Another website to visit is (laughs) nocamels.com. So I'm going to just check that out because that sounds kind of funny. I don't know what that's going to have on it. Um, And then here are some other um, organizations in Israel. Um, Innovation Africa, Save a Child's Heart, Israel Aid, and then Made in Israel Medicine. And so we're going to watch a couple of different humanitarian um, videos posted. I think they're a couple. Some of them are just a couple um, minutes long. The Israel Collective, though, um, is Israel21c.org. And then, um, oh, No Camels is an Israeli tech and innovation news website. So nocamels.com, that's what that is. Um, Okay, so let's watch one, two, three. We've got three or four videos here. Let's see how much, how long they are. Boom. An average day, yeah. <laughs> there are no, no such things like average day. Every day is a new adventure.
this is the situation is kind of surrealist, right? Because we are uh, two countries at war where we are treating the the injured over the other side. This shows the trade that there is in Judaism. The, even in the most holy of the celebrations that we had, you're allowed to break the rituals as long as you're saving a life. We feel very honored of having the chance to help a tiny bit this fraction of humanity that we can help, and it makes us feel very proud. I also worked in uh, Jerusalem before, where there was a big wave of uh, terrorist attacks, and I had the opportunity to treat a terrorist that killed many civilians. And it was a hard thing to do, but you cannot take sides. It's not proper that you as a doctor take the side and you act as a judge. You cannot. I know that if it would be the other way around, most likely I wouldn't receive the same treatment, but that's not the point. The point is they are coming to my hospital, they're entering the gates of my department, they're gonna receive all the treatment that I can give, no matter where they come from, and you know, if it's uh, Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, whatever it is, they are here, they're gonna receive the same treatment as any Israeli that arrives here. There is no way of understanding what happens here unless you live here. Yes, no matter how far you, you be or how close a neighbor you are, you will never see the full picture. Yes, it's always easy to, to take side to the, with the ones that are cataloged like weak, but if you see the problem with the terrorists nowadays or the, of the radical Islam, is an issue where there is disrespect for human life. Whatever the reason, there is disrespect for human life. And that's what we live day by day since the early beginning of this country. We're here to serve. Any person that needs medical attention, we're here for you. No matter where you come from, no matter where you are, what religion you have, this, you come here, you're gonna be treated with the same respect as any other patient. Yeah, doubt that would happen in um, no. other places. The next one is called Exposing the Surprising Heart of Israel. It's five minutes, almost six minutes long. So let's watch this. In essence, we save a child's heart as a child as a child, and we have the duty to, to provide medical care for all children, regardless of where they come from. And it really doesn't matter if the child coming to save a child's heart is coming to us from the West Bank, from Gaza, or whether the child is coming to us from, from Syria or from Iraq. Every child deserves the best medical treatment that he can receive. And I think this is part of the ethics on which people involved with Save a Child's Heart have been brought up in. Save a Child's Heart is a non-profit organization that provides life-saving heart procedures for children from developing countries. To date, the organization has saved the lives of more than 3,500 children from 48 countries here in Israel at the Wolfson Medical Center in Hulon. Here's the children's home and the mother's home during their stay here. They like coming back here. They look forward to coming back to the home because, you know, hopefully it's a happy, fun place for them. My role here is as a volunteer. Every time I come here, I just want to put smiles on the children's faces. Like, that's what I consider my role to be. But it is hard, as in, you come here and you think the children are just like every other child, but they really are sick. And it is sometimes hard not to take that home with you and worry about them and think about them because you do like fall so in love with them. And we're very proud that this is based on the core values that we believe in, which bring, I think, out the best of Israel, but not only Israel, it's a combination of Israel, but and Jewish values, Jewish values that each and every one of us has been brought up on, and the idea is, is life. Is this your daughter? Yes. How old are you? She's three. We're from West Bank. For follow-up for my daughter, Nada, she's my first daughter, and she was uh, one month. Uh, they told us we're, we may go home without her. 
so they did a, a lot they saved her and now she's uh, she's good now she can go to kindergarten and she grew up i'm fatima from kfar qasim my job basically Every Tuesday we have a Palestinian clinic, as you see today. One day a week I make like a support group. I invite families, Palestinians or Israeli or anyone, sometimes African, sometimes Syrian, Kurdish. We just talk and uh, share thoughts, share experiences. They can learn from each other because at the end of the day they have the same problem. Children with heart problem or any other problem. You'll find Christians Muslims and Jews, they might come from Arab neighborhoods or from, from Jewish neighborhoods, but they have one thing in, in common, and that is saving children's lives. I met many families here from Gaza, from the West Bank, from uh, Iraq. The real sad story is the fact that we have not operated on a single Egyptian girl. There is so much anti-Israeli propaganda in Cairo and places like this. So it's going to look weird for people to come here and get treated. The closest we ever got was an Egyptian father trying to find a solution for his kid via the internet, being in contact with our people in England. When he understood that the surgery was to happen here in Israel, the last sentence we heard from him was that rather see my kid dead than treated by the Jew. And that's what creates like, you know, people like ISIS and stuff like that. It's this kind of hatred. And we should like push in the direction of education, of like showing to the people the real thing and not getting them go after crazy stories, letting your kid die when it could be treated. It's not always what, what we see at TV, you know, on TV. There is relationship between both sides. Families will become friends with other families, Israeli and Palestinian. When they meet each other, when they um, know each other here closely, they find that we are the same at the end. We are all the same. We are human. What they don't know is um, how they treat us. Like it's, uh, it's very good. They have one aim. To save their children. You just realize that Israel contributes so much to the world and really does make a difference. And I wish that everyone could see this side of Israel. It's beautiful. I'll just put a little bit of story of a doctor here. When you're trained to be a physician, you're trained to, to treat everyone without any difference of color, of money, of religion, whatever. And Sebe Charsat does that ev like every day. This is what one of the things, apart from medicine, that I'm planning to take back home. Treat everyone with love and make the world a better place. You know, I met here families who had uh, uh, negative views regarding Israel. But yeah, they saved their, their lives, their children's lives. And I can only say to people who I meet wherever I go, come and join us. Sweet baby faces. <laughs> Comments. Yeah, just spreading joy even through the generations. I mean, um, what kind of love is it that you would allow your child to die? Um, yeah. Opportunities. I mean, coming from the land of opportunities. I mean, that's just hard for my my brain to wrap around. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Children aren't commodities to be bought and sold or to live and to die for indecency and immorality and vileness and so yeah. not even ignorance. Yeah. A, a father's heart, a mother's heart should be for the survival of their children, their safety and their protection. And if that's not in you, you shouldn't be having children at all. You shouldn't be even be around children. To be so blinded, yeah, it's just it's just ugly. It's ugly to see and to hear. Um, this next video is called "School for Syrian Refugees Built by Israelis?" Question <laughs> mark. Seven minutes as well.
As a Jew, I always learn about the people that sat on the side during the Holocaust. When I first heard or learned about what is going on in Syria, I started to think what, what we can do. When you look at the refugees, you see many families who only have one parent. You see many children who sometimes have no parents at all. And all of that is a result of a war. Many of these kids who are here have never been to school before. They don't have anywhere to go. They can't go to a Turkish school, they can't go to a Greek school. This is perhaps one of the only places that was able to give them a home. Especially the kids that come from Syria and never went to school. Some of the adult kids, they're around 12 or 13 because the war started seven years ago, so they never went to school. About half of the population of the refugees in Lesbos is um, children under the age of 18. So for us, it was what we had to do in order to uh, give an answer to that immense need of education. Our teachers are from the communities, they are refugees themselves. I ran away from my country because we have war in my country. I don't want sharing in the war. Until now, we have we have fighting, we have we have bomb and like this. So it's very very difficult life in this area. It's very hard to find any food. It's it's, it's very hard to find water, some water for drinking. Everything I feeling before, like everything is, is broke. Everything, uh, I don't find my family, uh, is, my house is, is broke. I think you can understand something deeply, then you could touch the pain about that issue. Sometimes you are listening to some of your students' story and just you can't stop crying. In the School of Peace today, we have children from Syria, Iraq, Somalia, Uganda, Congo, Afghanistan, Iran. Working with refugees from so many nations helps us take the experience we gained worldwide in the story of the Jewish people and take this experience and meet the people with the people and work out together a better system and a better way of living together. We're telling them and the teachers telling them that uh, they know what is to run away from their own uh, country because of violence, because of wars, because of fight. And here they need to remember it and they need to create a new safe place. And I think that if they will choose to be these leaders and they will choose to, to meet each other, the world will look differently, and this gives me a lot of hope. Every day in the beginning, every day in the beginning, all children come to me and run off to me and hug me and kiss me. In the, this moment, in the, this moment, I forget everything what happening with me in the before. Everything. Just, it's like my heart like full energy it's full love again. At first, it was very difficult for people from Syria to work in cooperation with Israelis. But when they realized that there is, in Israel there are Arabs and there are Jews in, in which they work in cooperation, and they saw that we are coming here, you know, to help them, to give them, you know, some hope. So we started to build, you know, this trust between Israelis and Syrian. And I think that the, the message was if we can do it, if we can work together, we should too. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Yeah.
I'm 28 years old, so uh, it was my first uh, th first time I could uh, see some Israelis. So, and uh, I should say they are perfect, you know, because <laughs> they're amazing in teamwork, and I could learn a lot of things uh, here. I really want to try to make society exactly a school of peace. You know, we can live in the peace. And yesterday I was talking about another friend and told no, there is hope. I see like Hair and Anat and Rony, like I didn't see before because they are very nice with the kids. And if any country have uh, pe uh, people like this, I think it is a peace country because they are helping the refugee and they are giving the heart. Israel is a country that used the anthem hope as its national anthem. And when you have Israelis, Jews and Arabs working together to help another community, I think it brings the best of Israel. And the fact that we're able to do this with Jews and Arab Israelis working together to help another community or other communities, uh, that's really for me the embodiment of this idea of tikva, of hope, the national anthem of this country. For me, the greatest hope for the school is that we can close it because it means there's peace in the world. But for as long as we need it, and for as long as there are people in need and they are hurting, that we can not only work in this International School of Peace in Lesbos, but that we'd have the option to expand it and open many branches of it so we can reach as many kids and, and people in need as we can. beautiful <laughs> I absolutely love it uh, we have one more video yeah I just want to say that this go that goes to show that we're not talking about uh, an entire country or an entire region or like we said nationality or tribe or language that is committing heinous crimes we know it's a small a smaller group or a smaller whatever we we do and know and understand that there are syrians and people from iraq and uh, iran and all over that do mm -hmm. want peace and do want safety and they do yeah. want all these things too and it and it is achievable and like they said there is hope um so that's just like you said, it's so beautiful. <laughs> beautiful babies. <laughs> All right, this last video is uh, Jews, Muslims, Christians, Druze, saving lives in Israel. Quick uh, two minute video. And then that'll be the end of our lesson. בין העדה הדרוזית. גם בין העדה הדרוזית. איחוד הצלה זה ארגון של מתנדבים. כשיש קריאת חירום, אנחנו שוכחים מהכל בשביל להציל אותו בן אדם שהוא במצוקה והוא צריך טיפול רפואי. זה מחמם את הלב לראות שבארגון יש מכל המגזרים, מכל הדתות, בלי שום הבדל בין גזע, דת ומין. ויש לנו מטרה אחת, זה לצאת ולהציל חיים. הרבה מקרים מאוד מאוד מגוונים. לא רק מתאר עירוני או בין עירוני, לא רק תאונות בכבישים או אנשים שלא מרגישים טוב בבית, אלא גם הרבה מקרים של שטח פתוח שמערבים גם יחידות חילוץ לדוגמה ומסוקים של חיל האוויר. אנחנו לא בודקים איזה צבע עור יש לחולה או לפצוע, לא בודקים מאיזה מגזר הוא ואיך קוראים לו, אלא מטפלים, מטפלים בו כפצוע, מטפלים בו כמטופל. מעצם זה שהוא בן אדם מצליח לעשות החייאה לחולה קשה, גם אם הוא מוסלמי, גם אם הוא בדואי, זה ממש לא משנה. עדיין אותה התרגשות בכל, בכל החייאה. אנחנו מייצגים את מגזר הערבים. אנחנו יד ביד את, את היהודים ואת הערבים ואת הנוצרים משתפים פעולה ביחד. אנחנו יד אחד, משפחה אחד. אני שהרגשתי שהכנסתי לארגון איחוד הצלה, ממש באמת יעני... הרגשתי זה משפחה אחד. אז אני מתנדב ומתחיל בהצלת חיים. זה לא משנה 
مين أو دات أو, أو مش لو إيه وأنا متطوع في حدة سلا وحبيت إني أكون بخدمة الناس والمحتاجين حرق كل مكرش أنا ولا خلاف شاني حزارة بيت أنا مرقيش أنا جبور أنا مرقيش أنا ملك أنا مرقيش بفنيم شاني نوح شاني يشين أنا مرقيش عتمي شعسيتي ما شاني تسرق لعصوت Just, um, I'm just reminded of these nations, these large nations that are like speaking out against Israel in light of everything that's going on with Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. And I mean, these are countries with like intelligence communities that are like massive, global intelligence communities and for them to speak out against israel and support hamas and support they're just bold-faced liars is all i can say you know what israel's doing you've seen what israel's doing you're monitoring what israel's doing and yet you you know think that the rest of the world And I mean, they think that the rest of the world, that they can deceive the rest of the world and um, to make us look stupid. But it's out there. If you just look, it doesn't take very much to actually find it. You know, Israel is a great nation, a great state. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and all the people there, Jews, Muslims and Christians and whoever else. Um, they're, they're great people. They, the people that want to live there in peace, let them live in peace. And the people who don't want peace, kick them out. <laughs> That's what the IDF is in, in, in the military is working to do right now. Um, and every, the world should support that. The world should support uh, light and justice and truth and equality. Thoughts? Uh, well, you brought up several things. We know that they're pushing a narrative One, Israel's blessed because the, they're in the hand of God. I mean, there's no other group, there's no other state, there's no other nation that succeeds, bounces back so quickly when it's taken other countries thousands of years and maybe not even still are not anywhere near the level of success. So that lets you know that whether it's based on Christianity or Judaism, you know, the blessings, um, give and you shall get and all that stuff, you know, the seeds you sow or the harvest you reap. So that's sign number one. The hate that's coming, like you said, from nations hundreds of times over the size of Israel and the amount of people coming against a nation small that does nothing that help lets you know that this is demonic This is a spiritual battle um, more than anything. Uh, and we know that they're pushing a narrative that make, has no logic. It will never be logical because destruction mm -hmm. is illogical. And um, <laughs> there was something, oh, oh, and then nations and, you know, wars past, even our nation did internment camps for people who were of the nationalities that were out destroying. And Israel's just saying, we just want the bad people out. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not rounding everybody up and putting them into camps until they're like, hey, we just we're going to put you here for our safety and your safety until all this stuff blows over. You know, yeah. they go in. They, like you said, they say, hurry, get out. We're coming through. We're coming for the bad guys only, you know. Mm -hmm. Or so it's just like truth 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 i don't care how many times we have to say it are you seeing the truth do mm -hmm. you recognize what's going on are you starting to search the truth out for yourself and not mm -hmm. just he said she said you know yeah. is it is it in your mind now to get with your church to get with your city to your mayor the mayor to mayor partnerships state to state mm -hmm. partnerships city to city partnerships you know yeah your congressmen and women Yeah. Like, are you Senators are, and representatives? Yeah. I mean, it's just, um, 
We just need to pray about it. Just lift them up in prayer all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the peace of Jerusalem is on our might, hearts and minds constantly. And we're in, we're in God's face constantly. <laughs> and, um, we, we, we are contending, we are petitioning, we are fasting, we are praying, we are, it keeps us awake at night. Um, <laughs> we're literally setting our clocks and, and praying around the clock every three hours, like the watchman. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know. We're joining prayer groups with people we've never met before, just because we can meet together on, in unity on this issue, because we know unity brings about even more powerful prayer and so um and yeah bringing our supply and, our, and the gifts that bringing our supply and bringing uh with us the gifts that the holy spirit has given us um you yeah. know we're almost well i keep saying well, i keep rounding up we're almost 40 now we're gonna be 37 <laughs> at the end of this month um but you know we're stay stay at home moms and uh, we work from home and, you know, we, it's not like we're a big muscular man that can <laughs> go f sign up and fight and, you know, yeah, battle. Yeah. yeah. But we're, you know, we can write letters. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of that, like, what was it? White chicks who made fun of white women writing letters. I'm going to write a letter, you know? we could totally write letters <laughs> to to our mayor and to our senators and representatives and our governors and say hey what can we do to support israel what can we do to to find a sister city and support that sister city and let's get together with the churches and the synagogues in our city to help pick churches and synagogues to partner with in our sister city you know, what innovations can they share with us and what resources can we share with them to help support the nation? Because when when this when this is over, there's going to be a lot of rebuilding that needs to be done and they're going to need financial support as well. So that's something that we could be doing right now, tomorrow um, to just to just help. So speak up speak out well that also brings a secondary like do your homework mm -hmm. search what has israel done for my maybe city what has israel done for my state what has israel done for my ethnicity mm -hmm. what has israel done you know for me and you'll i think a lot of people will be surprised mm -hmm. in that um, yeah. what has Israel done for my region you know and we already have the national we just went through the world at everything they're giving in military um, medical uh, technology well, that's not even everything that that oh. was like a, a, yeah one one hundredth or one one thousandth of a list of what they've actually done like I'm gonna have to go and search and just find I'm sure it's out there pages <laughs> of stuff that Israel and people from out of the state of Israel have done to bring technology and advancement like that they've shared with the, the whole globe, <laughs> you know, so yeah, that, um, I don't know if you have anything else to add, but that was the end of the lesson. And so our next video, we're going to be coming covering a uh, lesson seven, which uh, is kind of long, so we'll probably we'll probably just do one video of that. Or yeah, I don't know. Seven isn't so big; it's eight. I think that's a little bit bigger. But we're getting into the political stuff now, and we're getting into um so like well, lesson seven is called the development of modern Zionism, and then lesson eight we get into um encountering Palestine. And then it gets into like world war, the, the wars. So the interwar period, um, world wars and stuff like that. So we're not quite halfway through because I believe there's like 20 lessons in this course. 
So, but we're getting into the the nitty gritty, and this has just kind of been a introduction into yeah. There's twenty lessons. Introduction. We are praying for the region, peace in the region. We are mm -hmm. praying for countries. Um, the Holy Spirit moves in miraculous ways, and I get countries to pray for as prayer assignments. Um, we pray for our covenant brothers and sisters. We pray. So that means the body of Christ and God's covenant people of Jacob. We pray for those who are not in this fight. Um, we pray all the same things. We cover the globe <laughs> like, and all peoples, all tribes, all nations, whether you're in uh, two guys in the middle of an island stranded in the middle of the ocean, we're praying for you. Um, so this is, but, but this is serious. This is all eyes on what's going on right now in Israel. Um, so I don't want those people to be like, well, what about, well, what about, I'm sure there, there all are those people. We've got you covered. Um, whether yeah. you want it or not, <laughs> we've got you. Yeah. We've got our allies covered. We've got our enemies covered. We've got the body of Christ covered. We've got the Jews covered and we've got everybody else co covered. Who's not in one of those categories. Even if you're atheist and you don't believe that there is a higher power or a higher God, we're praying for you. <laughs> we're praying for those in the occult. We're if, praying you have breath, so if you have breath in your lungs, you. you're covered. <laughs> we're you covering it. we're covering the inanimate, you know, and the animate. So the air and the land and it, you know the, the water, water below. Mm -hmm. Everything. So um we're kind of not as energetic the last two videos because we've been doing these at night and it's like way past our bedtime. <laughs> So hopefully we can bring some energy in the next couple of videos. Um, but yeah, we love you. Um, have a great rest of your day. Share this video. Like. We don't have comments turned on for obvious reasons. Um, but share it and go out and get the, the Israel course, the book, um, where you can do the online version. And I think uh, kufi.org is the website. Um, menu, learn. Um, one thing, it's it's quite a ways away, but they're taking registrations right now for our Kufi Summit in um, the D.C. area, which Katie and I have been a part of for the last two uh, years as far as being able to be at the summit and go and, and speaking to our representatives um, and, and senators about really important legislation that uh, Kufi supports. And so um, registration for the summit is going on right now. It's going to be a beautiful location, beautiful uh, hotel this next summer. So sign up, sign your churches up, sign your youth groups up because they do bring your kids. They have um, camp for children and for teenagers, too. Um, so, yeah, sign up the whole family, the whole church, bring them uh, to the, the Kufi Summit this summer. And join us on Facebook, uh, Prayer Force, Texas and Oklahoma. You can find us. And that's all I've got. Anything else, Kate? Nope. Nope. Not, not at this moment. All right. Love you all. We're praying for you. Have a great rest of your day. We claim you for the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> We speak blessing and prosperity and favor in the mind of Christ all over you <laughs> and your children. <laughs> Amen.